Well, it looks like it's up to Tom Cruise to save the summer movie season again. Uh, Brickhouse here with another video. And, um, you know, we have uh, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 coming out uh, in July. And so far, the summer movie season has been... Pretty much bomb after bomb after bomb after bomb. In fact, it's, if memory serves me correct, it's eerily similar to last year. At least last year, that was until Top Gun Maverick came out. Well, here's a little video that I found. Some of you may have seen this, some of you may have not, but this was at the Oscars. Uh, earlier this year, and it was a little, um, this was caught a little conversation between Steven Spielberg and Tom Cruise. There you heard it. Right out of Steven Spielberg's mouth. You saved Hollywood's ass. Well, it's going to be up to Tom Cruise again to save Hollywood's ass. Uh, this is an opinion piece. This was written by Johnny Okinski out of the New York Post. And uh, he starts off, success at the summer box office this year has so far been mostly Mission Impossible. So much for the 2.3 billion Avatar The Way of the Water raked in, raked in last Christmas. Movie theaters are back to being an armory of high-profile bombs. This weekend, The Flash dropped a staggering 73% in its second week to a worldwide total of just $210 million. Needless to say, The Flash, it'll be lucky to break even. A more than 50% decline for an expensive DC comic superhero film spells trouble. Consider that fellow Justice League member Aquaman made $229 million by its second weekend in the U.S. and Canada alone. Well, I can tell you the new Aquaman movie that comes out in December is not going to do that. Pixar's Uninspired Elemental released June 16th, same day as The Flash, so far has grossed 121 million. And that's going to be one of the Disney owned animation studios' biggest failures ever. In contrast, five years ago this month, The Incredibles 2 grossed 1.2 billion. Disney's live action Little Mermaid has made 500 million which is less than half of 2017's remake, The Lion King. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, which comes out this weekend, is projected to open this weekend to just about 60 million domestically. That's 40 million less than 2008's King Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. The movie is trapped in an existential temple of doom. Disney execs staring at these numbers probably look like the guy in Raiders of the Lost Ark when his face melts off. The only bright spot so far this summer has been Sony's animated Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse with 560 mil million worldwide. Only one man can save struggling movie theater chains again. As if summoned by a desperate prayer, Tom Cruise will parachute in on July 12th with Paramount's Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. The film is expected to open domestically to about $90 million over five days. 
setting a possible record for the seven film franchise and heaps more internationally. If I were Cruz, I'd be jumping up and down on Oprah's couch because I would know full well that I'm the only reliably bankable movie star left. That, I would say, is indeed fact. Tom Cruise is probably the last actual movie star in Hollywood. It's not an exaggeration to say that in May 2022, as theaters were hobbling along, Cruise and his sometimes irate efforts to finish and release Top Gun Maverick rescued cinemas around the world that have been sitting empty. Maverick was a sequel to a 36-year-old movie that millennials and Gen Zers who regularly flocked to Mar Marvel films couldn't care less about. Older fans of the heartthrob-filled original had no clue if it would be any good. But the action movie opened at the Cannes Film Festival, received euphoric reviews, and ultimately grossed $1.49 billion worldwide. Harking back to the monolithic cultural, war, cultural moment of Star Wars Episode 7, The Force Awakens. That was, well, that was until they found out what Disney Star Wars was all about, then Episodes 8 and 9 were meh. They may have drawn, but they were meh. Seemingly, everybody saw Maverick. You see, what 60-year-old Cruz has managed in this phase of his career quite brilliantly is to become synonymous with entertainment. Not prestige, not awards, not sexiness, nor hilarity. A Cruz movie simply means a fantastic time had by all. That's because his movies develop characters and tell a story. That's it, plain and simple. Five years ago, I gave Mission Impossible Fallout four stars and called the franchise the best ongoing action series out there. Its consistent sky-high quality is, in large part, because of Cruz's well-known insistence on doing his own stunts. His overachieving attitude makes his, his thrill-ride movies more tac tactile and real than anything else in the genre. Marvel films, especially The Wolf, Bolt, Ant-Man, and the Wasp, Quantumania, feels incredibly like a two-and-a-half-hour green screen exercise that audiences struggle to connect with. And Dial of Destiny, a very obvious, obviously CGI Ford, runs on top of a moving train. The sequence is alarmingly fake and hard to believe. That Cruz regularly puts himself in harm's way for the sake of a scene has become well known to average moviegoers. Plus, he does it with nuclear charm and unrelenting intensity. And we feel going in that he has worked extraordinarily hard for our money. I suspect, suspect in three weeks, Cruise and Paramount will make a ton of it. My opinion is, Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning Part 1, will probably do a billion dollars. That's my opinion, that's my projection, based on nothing else but the fact that it's Tom Cruise, it's action, it's a story, and it's going to be entertaining. So tell me what you think down below. Leave a comment, share your opinion. While you're at it, please smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And uh, hit the notification bell to get notified when my content becomes available here on YouTube. You can also find me on Rumble and Odyssey. And as always, please, thank you for taking the time to tune in. I appreciate it. Thank you for watching, and I will see you later.